All right. And speaking of molding on cabinets, uh, this is how I make it most of the time. If it's just like a standard, like a not ridiculous cabinet. Um, so a lot of times I'll start out with a square and then I'll basically just start by extruding in. Um, and the reason I start with a square instead of like the base uh, shape, like if this is more the shape of my cabinet, um, you'll notice that like with rectangular stuff, so I extrude this and I scale this down. Uh, you can see that these the sides here on the longer side scale way more aggressively than these guys here. So that means pretty much for every for every single thing I'm going to have to do, I'm going to have to go and like manually scale each of the sides, um, which is not only a pain, but it introduces more risk of having things not be symmetrical. So I usually, again, start with the square, and then when I'm done with that, like when I'm done with the, the molding design, I can just sort of grab half of the square and drag it over to whatever size I need, and that way everything stays equidistant on the sides. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Um, but yeah, so it's not a, it's not it's a pretty simple process for the most part. So I'm just gonna like make something that might resemble like a molding design. Um, and to do that, I'm mostly just using the extrude and the scale tool. Um, I'm not doing anything terribly fancy, just like throwing together something. And I, to do all these commands, I'm basically just hitting G to repeat the last command, which was the extrude tool. Um, and then R to scale and maybe move the, the object. Um, cool. So assuming that I actually like the design on this cabinet, I don't hate it entirely. Um, but like if I wanted this to be smooth, because like you'll notice, wow. So if you look in here, um, if maybe I was like really planning on like pressing really close up to this in an in a animation or something, it's pretty obvious this is like really cubey and a lot of these edges are super hard. Um, so to smooth this, pretty much all I do is, <coughs> um, I would just go through and because of the way that this is set up, and I kind of explained like a little bit more about the the methodology about like hardening object lines when you use extrude, um, but because basically because I had a face that was extruded in, um, when I add the edge loop in here, it's going to run along these. Uh, these edges in here. Uh, so when I smooth this, it's going to provide really nice 45 degree angles on... Uh, it's going to provide really nice 45 degree angles on the corners of the cabinet. Um, so you'll notice, like much like you would on a real cabinet, you have like this little um, like divot or seam kind of thing in here, um, which is actually what I want. So again, it makes just like really, really nice um, hard lines on the sides of your objects at 45 degree angles, because that's usually how uh, cabinet wood is actually mitered. Um, and it also makes your life way easier for UVing, because uh, you can pretty much just cut out this whole section and then change, uh, orient the UVs so that all of your wood grain is like pointing in the right direction without having to make a bunch of like ridiculous custom textures in Photoshop, um, which I might do another tutorial on later. but. Yeah, so this is, for the most part, how I make cabinetry. And then if I needed to, again, if I needed to stretch this, just come in. I, for some reason, like working with verts. I don't know why. But just grab all these verts and be like, boom. And now you have a cabinet, and I can stretch this to whatever the heck random shape that I need. Um, and it's just, like, super quick and easy. Like, you can see I literally did this in, like, three minutes. Um, and I now have cabinets that I can size to whatever thing I need. It's just like a really nice, easy way to add um, a little visual interest to a environment if you're working on it.